Hello fellow captains, this is the Doctor and welcome to another Star Trek Online video. In today's video we're going to culminate a couple of things that I have actually already reviewed but I'm going to put these two things together in a way that I haven't done yet and explore them and I think this is going to be quite exciting. Uh, I'm looking forward to this, doing this video myself, however, I'm just winging it. I really have no format for this. I don't even know what I'm going to show you or how I'm going to do this yet. I just know that I basically want to demonstrate this ship with this gear on it, and um, that's pretty much it. So what I'm talking about is, first of all, the Temporal Multi-Mission Science Vessel. Yes, I've already done a review on this ship. I did a complete review. I'll put a link up top. Check out that review first because that's where you're going to learn all about this ship specifically and its powers and everything about that. Now, when I originally did that review, I had on it the Delta Alliance Reputation Space Set. Now, I have a different set. I have the complete temporal reputation stuff on here. And, of course, I have done a review on the Temporal Defense Initiative reputation recently as well. In fact, I did uh, a couple of videos on this. So please go check, uh, check those videos out as well. I'll put a link to them because I went over all of the temporal defense gear and what it all means, what unlocks, what you can get, and I went over the ground abilities and I went over the space abilities in that video. But what I haven't done, and what I'm going to do here in this video, as you can now see, is that I have put both of them together. I now have the full complete temporal reputation on my temporal multi-mission science vessel. Even more, it's all upgraded, as you can see, to epic levels. Mark 14, epic I have been working so hard guys on this that's why you really haven't seen a lot of videos lately I have been working a lot on on uh, doing all the uh, things I need to do all the grinding to upgrade these things so as you can see I have now done it I have made pretty much everything on this ship is epic there's really there's nothing else on this ship right now that I can upgrade further Everything, no, I take that back. I see three things. <laughs> I have my aft weapons are still only, are still only um, uh, ultra rare. But everything else is epic. So that's the goal in today's video is that I want to show you the temporal multi-mission science vessel from another angle and that is using the full temporal reputation gear. I figure it goes hand in hand, right? They released these things at the same time and they kind of intended for you to run the temporal reputation stuff on these temporal science, or not science, but these temporal ships um, anyway. I, but the temporal set does fit, fit better on, or the temporal reputation does work better on a science vessel. That's why I said science there. Uh, you could use it on any of the other temporal ships, no, no doubt about that. It's just that, as we went over in the original video, this whole set just fits a lot better for a science character. And so that's where I want to take this. I just want to show you basically, number one, what modifiers these items gained when, you went to, when I went to Epic. That way you can decide if you want to take your weapons up to epic level. You'll know what modifiers you're going to get. And then I want to show you this ship in battle. I mean, the best way to really demonstrate all of the temporal abilities and uh, all the powers that I have with the sets uh, and, you know, how it works with uh, taking damage and healing damage and that sort of thing is to just go into battle and show it to you. And so that's what I plan to do. I've, I mean, really, I've got no other ideas except just to go into battle and show you how it works, and we'll do some of that. Uh, I also want to show you the ground stuff as well because I've got it maxed out as, as well. So let's. what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hover over each thing, and we're going to first look at the modifiers that everything has gained. So the deflector 
is the Temporal Defense Initiative Deflector Array, of course, from the Temporal Reputation. Um, it gained a, an Aux Power modifier, so that's a plus two auxiliary power setting. Very important, again, for a science-type ship. Um, and it gained a SH slash hull, cut, hull capacity. So that is shield slash hull capacity. So both my shield capacity and my hull capacity has gone up with this deflector by having that new modifier added to it. So all of it together gives me plus 40 starship hull restoration, plus 40 starship shield restoration, plus 10 starship hull capacity, plus 10 starship shield capacity, plus 20 starship exotic particle generator, and plus 20 starship control expertise out of this one deflector. So just an awesome amount of capability from this temporal reputation deflector uh, for a science ship. Uh, obviously there's things here that if you put it on a cruiser or a tactical or escorty type ship would not benefit so much. For example, the improved exotic particle generator, that's really not going to, you know, help like a tactical escort kind of character. Um, the control effects, that's not going to help too much. Now the resistance to control effects, that could help, but the improved control effects, obviously, more so for science. Same with exotic damage. Now the improved shield hit points and starship hit points um, and the shield healing and hull healing, that could help any ship. So in general, that is definitely, you know, a, a good thing there for pretty much any starship. And then the auxiliary power setting, again, more so for a science ship, although it could help certain powers that may be buffed through auxiliary power on other ships. But anyway, as you can see, it fits really well with this, with this temporal multi-mission science vessel and, of course, any of the other temporal science ships. This is not the only temporal science ship. There's another 26th century ship, too, that this set would also fit very well with. I'm going to skip the secondary deflector because that you can go and get that from your uh, fleet, your fleet research center. This is not part of the reputation, so we'll skip that. The Impulse, this is from the Reputation, the Temporal Reputation. This is the Temporal Defense Initiative Combat Impulse Engine. It gained a Sector Space, or Sector Speed, Dash 2, and then a Speed modifier. So basically, the Sector Space modifier is a plus 20 Starship Sector Space Speed. Improved travel speed in Sector Space, basically. Obviously, that's not going to help you in combat. That's just why you're flying in sector space. So that one kind of is a throwaway. Although it does help you get to system to system a little faster. Um, the speed one, however, that one is better. That one is, um, well, I think it's just basically more flight speed. Plus 20 flight speed, efficient at low power levels. And this also has a, 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 a uh, turn rate buff there and a remove one hazard debuff when healed by hull healing bridge officer and captain abilities and a plus five weapon power setting and uh, the all powered engines is plus 177.5 so I, at epic level this is a pretty cool um, impulse engine I mean it does increase your weapon power which you would not expect from something like that so that's pretty cool now we go on to the warp core. I'm very excited that the warp core got amp when I upgraded it. That is a very, very, very welcomed power to have if you're looking for DPS. Amp, of course, is plus 3.3% all damage per subsystem with 75 or more power. So that is very welcomed. You want amp. This thing gave us amp. Its other modifier it gave us was weaponed to shield. So that takes your whatever your weapon power is and adds some power to your shield. And now of course what that does is that's not necessarily shield capacity. That is shield healing or regeneration rate of your shield more precisely. So that's what that does. Something like that could be very beneficial on an escort. 
It's not such a big deal for me on the science ship because I've got pretty good heals anyway, but I'll take it. So this whole warp core in itself gives you plus 7.5 additional auxiliary power, very important for a science ship, plus 5 maximum auxiliary power, allows your auxiliary power to exceed 125. You can have a higher than 125 auxiliary on this ship. That makes it a very powerful science ship. Maximum warp factor 14 adds 7.5% of your aux power to your weapon power. So it also has that, which is not really mentioned there, and uh, it's not a modifier, it's just an innate ability of the warp core, adds aux power to weapon power. It has plus 40 starship warp core efficiency, um, a little slipstream speed bonus. It has amp, and then it has 7.5% of your weapon power to your shield power. So that's the modifier it got. And then it has the trajector warp core self-teleport thing as well. Then we come down to the shield. This one gained a capacity and a capacity regeneration. So this has a plus 30 starship drain expertise, improves energy and shield drains and resistance to the same. It's got a high shield capacity. Mine's at 12,000 just sitting here on the ground. I think it's actually different when we go into space. Um, it has a high shield regeneration and a passive shield regeneration increases as your shields are damaged. Now this is really cool. When we go into combat, you will see this effect happen on our ship and I want you to pay attention and look for it because you will see this. It's kind of like a shield bubble goes over my ship. It is a passive shield regeneration and it increases as your shields are damaged up to a 100% increase, okay? and it reduces all energy damage to shields by 10%. So this passive shield regeneration will constantly regenerate my shields. It's really cool. I want you to pay attention to that when we're in the combat. Now that whole set together is called the Temporal Defense Initiative set. And it has a set two, set three, and set four bonus. Uh, so we'll just go over those uh, real quick. Remember, I have already reviewed all this in a previous video. I'm just going over this again so you know what's happening when we go into combat on this ship. Um, predictive decay algorithms, a plus 25% all damage for damage over time and hazard effects. Timeline expertise using engineering team or science team or tactical team gives me improved starship control expertise and resistance and plus 20 starship drain expertise and resistance so that's cool and then the set 4 bonus is an activatable power called temporal fracture um, it uh, basically does physical damage every one second ignores shields and holds the target so we will pay attention to those things happening when we go into combat now for the next set, obviously I have the weapon set from the Temporal Reputation. This one is called the Temporal Defense Initiative Armaments Set. This consists of the Temporal Defense Chronoton Beam, the Temporal Defense Chronoton Torpedo, and then the, uh, the Chronoton Drive Actuator. So, at Mark 14 Epic, the Temporal Defense Chronoton Beam Array gained an accuracy slash damage and a damage. So basically you got two damages and an accuracy. So that's, that's not bad. That's really not bad. Two damages there. Um, two target. It does anti-proton damage. These numbers are a little false right now until we get into space. Um, two and a half chance of applying the Enhanced Chronoton Stabilization to self. Uh, plus 5% flight speed and turn rate. Uh, this is a passive ability. This just happens on its own. Reduces damage to shields by 3%. Stacks up to 5 times. So these are things that are going to be happening while we're in combat uh, with that weapon. Then you have the Timbrel Defense Quantiton Torpedo Launcher. It also gained an accuracy damage and, and a damage. So a whole lot more kinetic damage. And this also has the Enhanced Chronoton Stabilization, which is a plus 5% flight speed and turn rate, 
and reduces damage to shields by 3%. Uh, then we come down to the actuator and it itself has a plus five weapon power setting a plus five shield power a plus 18.8 .8 control expertise and a plus 9.4 percent maximum shield capacity now because this is a set it says a two and three piece bonus the two piece bonus is called frequency tuning it is plus 8.9 percent directed energy weapon damage that's passive you don't have to do anything it's just right there automatically and a plus 5% critical severity on its own. And then there is an activable, activatable power called temporal threading, two minute recharge, your weapons gain plus 25% armor penetration, flat out for 15 seconds, 25% armor penetration. That's awesome. So we will definitely be using temporal threading to do more damage. And uh, so all of those are maxed out that's what you get on that gear. Now, what the ability that's native to this ship, which I already did review, is the causal anchor. I'm not going to go over all that again, but um, it, it's at the same level it was when I reviewed the ship. So you can go back and watch that original review if you want to see that. Um, I won't demonstrate it too much here because I've already demonstrated it before. The point of this video is to try out all the temporal reputation stuff on the temporal multi-mission science vessel. That's the goal here. Uh, one other change I made that I probably did not have in the last video on this ship is that I took off my neutronium that I had from the dilithium mine and I now have the trellium D plating. I have grown to really like this trellium D plating. I've upgraded it of course to Mark 14 Epic and it also gives a kinetic and all energy damage resistance just like the neutronium but it does even more than that it increases your hull capacity more it also gives you a maximum shield capacity as well plus 16.7 percent maximum shield capacity and it adds seven and a half percent of your aux power to your shield power as bonus power and you are immune to the effects of the delphic expanse so basically, I'm going to have a crap load of shield power on this, on this boat <laughs> when we go into space. You will see. Um, and we will go into space and take a look at all that. Before we head into space, though, let me just go over the ground real quick because I do want to show off the temporal reputation stuff on the ground as well. I have actually done this in the temporal reputation video. Uh, but I can't recall if I had everything up to epic level or not yet, but now I do. And so now I'm going to be able to show you all this as good as I can. This is the Temporal Defense Initiative Adaptable Combat Armor, Mark 14. It has an HP res and a reg HP. So a whole lot of stuff added to it, All dam a plus 8 all damage resistance rating plus 88 physical damage resistance, plus 88 kinetic damage resistance, plus 96 all energy damage, plus 36 radiation damage resistance, then toxic damage resistance, fire damage, cold, plus 165 maximum hit points, 0.47 health regeneration, plus 30 willpower, resistance to gr ground control effects, and plus 25% all damage for damage over time and hazard effects. Ton of abilities on the combat armor and then we have the shield it gained capacity 2 and mob mob is basically the root resistance rating the knockback resistance rating and then it has plus 30 armor expert it's got a high shield capacity um, chance to knock down nearby foes when you take damage reduces all energy damage to shields by 15 percent chance to provide a 10 percent energy damage buff four seconds when you take damage and then, of course, the weapon to go along with that is the Temporal Defense Chronoton Dual Pistols. They have Crit H damage and CRH. Basically, it's the same. It's still Crit H. Um, so, more crit chance and damage. Um, it has Anti-Proton damage times 5. And um, it says 199 DPS there, so I guess that's, that is true. That's what we're getting out of it is 199 DPS but I'm not sure if that is then multiplied by five or if that's just what you get. My Herald anti-proton beam, for example, is at 268 DPS. So if you just looked between these two, just at the DPS, obviously the Herald 
anti-proton beam projector sounds like it just does a whole lot more damage um, and it may actually do more damage so I, I guess that's how you read that somebody can correct me if I'm wrong there I think it's just the anti-proton damage that's multiplied by five not the DPS so these are really not the highest DPS weapons um, but they do 44.7 anti-proton damage times five whereas this one is doing 94 anti-proton times two so you can do the math on that anyway but in order to get the complete set of course you have to have all of it on there and um, so I do and the two-piece bonus to this is called chroniton acclimation a plus 13.3 percent anti-proton damage a plus 25 anti-proton damage resistance and then temporal stasis on the ground as well um, that basically physical damage and hold and I like this plus 13.3 anti-proton damage because that means now I can use other weapons and other modules kit modules or whatever that do anti-proton damage and that is now buffed by this two-piece chroniton acclimation that I have with the temporal set so if you're looking for a ground set that can specifically buff an energy type you will want to look at the temporal reputation ground set because it specifically buffs anti-proton damage on the ground that means now you can use other anti-proton weapons and benefit from higher damage because of the chroniton acclimation and that's what I've done you'll notice I I like to use and I do use the advanced herald anti-proton beam projector weapon from the low buy store this does anti-proton damage so that DPS that you're showing there is actually higher than it would be if I did not have the two-piece set from the temporal reputation on here I have some other powers that also do anti-proton damage and I specifically chose them because they do anti-proton damage and I can benefit from that plus 13.3 percent uh, anti-proton damage and one of them is the photonic overload this is anti-proton damage it's a cone AOE anti-proton damage so it's an anti-proton damage weapon I've also got uh, this is new I've got the mass gravimetric detonation um, this also does anti-proton damage as you can see at the bottom 347 or 342.7 anti-proton damage to targets in range blah 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 so that's an that's another anti-proton weapon that is being buffed by that chroniton acclim acclimation thing I don't think the gravimetric traps are anti-proton that's just physical damage um, so that seems to be the two that I have that's anti-proton that plus my weapon but you can see how you can start outfitting kit modules and things that actually go hand in hand with the actual energy type you're buffing and the temporal the temporal reputation ground set buffs anti-protons so you want everything you can get anti-proton I've also got the anti-time entanglement field um, and I also have of course the temporal stasis that's from the uh, set here is physical damage not anti-proton on that one so the uh, temporal or the anti-time entanglement field is again from the temporal reputation it's a kit module that you can get and as you can see now that kit modules are upgradable I have upgraded it to mark 14 epic you don't get modifiers on these you just mark 14 epic is as far as it can go and it creates a level 70 anti-time entanglement field for 12 seconds it does 43.6 physical damage 50 percent shield penetration each second um, negative run speed and all damage resistance on your enemy and so that's what you get when it's all maxed out at epic mark 14 so that is the complete temporal space set and ground set now the next bit of business is just to show you all of this in combat that's the best way I know of to demonstrate these abilities so let's go into space and we'll look at the stats on my temporal multi-mission science vessel before we go into combat 
so you know what I'm dealing with. Let all my power levels get up to where they need to go. Um, as you can see, I've got 125 on weapon. As I, as I said, my shield power is way up there, 97. Uh, 50 on engine and 85 on ox. So my ox power is actually um, pretty high, even without having to, you know, um, manually buff it with a battery or something like that. It's still pretty, pretty high, pretty high ox, which is which is what I want on a science vessel. My my hull strength is at 62,248. I mean, not terrible for a science ship. My shield capacity is through the roof on this thing, almost 30,000. I mean, that's amazing. My resistances are at 37%. I have a 15.4% critical chance and a 75% critical severity. My turn rate is 22.9 degrees per second. So very good stats here, very high power transfer rate as well. Very high, very good stats here on this science ship. Now that we're in space, we can take a look at some things here. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to go here. And what I want to look at is the DPS of my weapons, just so you'll know. The dual anti-proton beam bank I have up front is 1770 DPS, 2213 anti-proton damage. The one from the reputation set is 1468. Those are always less DPS. It's a single beam anyway, but those special weapons always seem to be a little lower on the DPS. But that's still, this is maxed out. This is Mark 14 Epic, so that's the best you're going to get without obviously buffing it by, you know, manual means or whatever. But I got 1468 DPS, 1835 anti-proton damage on it. The torpedo is 800 DPS and 8000 kinetic damage. That's pretty good. Um, my, my rear weapon's not really concerned about. Those are not upgraded to epic, but they are upgraded to Mark 14, and they're still pretty good too. A little less DPS than this one though. Now, of course, I can get that DPS up. All you got to do is do something like emergency power to weapons. Bada boom, now it's 1603 DPS and 2000 anti-proton damage out of that one. Or um, 1932 DPS and 2414 anti-proton out of that one. So, you know, obviously I've got the things on there to buff the weapon damage. But that just gives you an idea of where I'm at right now before we go into combat um, let me go over the powers I'm going to use because this is obviously what is the whole point of this video is to show you these temporal powers and how it all works in combat obviously I've got the uh, causal anchor this is the native ability of this ship that's the console it comes with so we have of course uh, already demonstrated this I might use it again once or twice, but really the point of this video is not so much to use the causal anchor because that's the part of the ship and we're really kind of looking at how the temporal reputation works on this ship. So for that, we're going to go to the abilities like the temporal fracture. This is part of the temporal defense initiative starship technology set. As you can see, 734.9 physical damage every one second for five and a half seconds. 100% shield penetration, hold target for 5.5 seconds, control amplification, minus 35 all damage resistance rating for 10 seconds. We also have, from the reputation, anti-time entanglement singularity. Yes, this is from the reputation. When you open up the active ability, this is that ability that you get. Target's foe creates a level 61 anti-time entanglement singularity for 12 seconds. 26, 33.6 physical damage, 100% shield penetration each second. Radius starts at 4 kilometers and continuously shrinks, so you have to be very close to the enemy to use this. But we will, I will demonstrate that. And then, of course, the temporal threading, very important. This is going to give me plus 25% armor penetration by enabling it. So those are the reputation powers that I have in space. And that's what we're going to use in combat. 
So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pause the video and I'm going to come back and uh, after I get something queued up or started here, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. I just know that I want to do a, um, several different things to demonstrate these powers. Some of it may be easy just so you can see what's going on and some of it may be kind of hard or, you know, just all out, you know, an all out brawl and I'll just go all out and we'll see what happens. I'm just going to wing it from here, guys. <laughs> But if you will just hang on one second, I will get something going. Welcome back, everybody. I thought we'd start off doing something a little simple, doing some common red alerts. Let's join a Tholian red alert. In this way, we can do something that is very common that several people, many people do, and in that way we can you know start off in uh, in an easy sort of fashion and um, I think we'll pretty much do all the red alerts we'll do this one we'll do a Borg one maybe a Nikul if that's still running um, the crystalline cataclysm is back may do that as well during this special event uh, some patrols maybe we'll see what happens I just want to get in here and um, my goal guys is just to play these things and I will use the abilities I may not talk a lot during this because I really want to concentrate on just taking out all the baddies so that's pretty much what I'm gonna do here I may not talk a lot but I will wreak some havoc how about that Yeah, <laughs> how was that? Woohoo! Pretty awesome, huh? Got some stragglers here, let's take care of them. There we go, no problem. So you will notice a lot of effects going on. Um, it's hard for me to keep up with all the things going active, you know, when I'm actually in battle. So many things are going across the screen happening here. Uh, but you'll notice all the things, you know, taking place with this temporal set, including that shield, heal, regeneration thing. Um, it's very cool. It procs a lot. So what you'll look for, I'll point it out next time in battle, but it did show up here in this one. It's kind of a shield effect thing. 
it happens a lot so very cool uh, but with this temporal set you can see with my temporal abilities I was able to do quite a bit there's a combo that I really like with these temporal abilities and what I'll have to do is find a big group of enemies and like when you enable all of your temporal abilities on it including a gravity well because I am science you include all those together you can take a group of enemies and literally vaporize them just with temporal abilities just with temporal abilities and I'll demonstrate that I need to find a big group and I'll max out my ox power hit all the science abilities I won't even fire on the enemies and you will see how much damage that actually does it's actually really cool but it goes to show how powerful these temporal abilities really are the temporal reputation abilities on a temporal science ship so hey we're at a uh, deep space encounter right now actually tell you what maybe this is Borg yeah this is Borg let's do Borg I can take a big group of Borg and do what I just said to them <laughs> um, so let's do that um, I said go to Borg Yes, go to Borg. They must have moved. There we go. Borg incursion queue. Let's do that. I think everybody is playing Crystalline Cataclysm right now, and so it's hard to get into some of these red alerts, honestly, because everybody's playing Crystalline Cataclysm. So maybe I'll, we, I will go ahead and do a run of Crystalline Cataclysm. We'll do it after, after this Borg one. Um, this ability is still on cooldown two minutes, so I'm not going to be able to show that ability in, with this combination. Although with that, actually, I would like to use that. I don't think I'm going to have enough time to wait for it to cool down, though. Not before this one pops, anyway. May have to include it on another round. Like I said, I'm winging this. I have no plan. I really didn't plan this out. All I know is that I had some cool gear here and I wanted to show you guys what it can do all maxed out. <laughs> you know, that's really the goal here. I got the temporal stuff from the temporal reputation on a temporal science vessel. And I'm really liking this build. It is so powerful. Uh, see, people are not accepting their their thing. There we go. It used to let you go in by yourself. You didn't have to like queue up. Have they changed queues here or something? I'm not sure. This is right after a recent patch. Maybe things have changed. Existence is futile. Let's see. Yeah, because now it won't. Now you have to go in with a full team. I guess. It used to let you go in solo. Well, let's find, um, let's find a thing. Let's see. Um, well, here's a couple of cubes. Let's do them. I was looking for some spheres, but we'll do, a, we'll do some cubes. I haven't tried this before yet, by the way, so... We'll see what happens. Stop firing, stop firing. Well, they're dead. <laughs> I was trying to stop it from firing, but it was going to fire anyway. Oh, I'm spinning all over the place. Now everything's on cooldown. Oh, well. Well, that did not go perfectly. There's the sh shield thing. It happened. I saw it. Anyway, as you can see, the board go down very easy with this build. I mean, two cubes gone by myself. No problem. No problemo. No problemo for me. I can take cubes out very easily. 
when all my abilities are active. Well, have failed. Okay, fine. It's time for that then. Four shields failing. Rear shields failing. Right shields failing. Left shields failing. That drain ability that the Borgs have for your shields is just nutso. Am I even going to make it there in time before they destroy it? <laughs> yes. All right, let's destroy it. Look, they haven't even done any damage to it yet. Your defensive capabilities are unable to withstand. We resistance is futile. Choice of marks, huh? I don't know what marks I need. Well, there you go. Borg red alert. That was easy, though. That was real easy. We need more difficult. Well, since everybody is in a crystalline cataclysm, let's go ahead and queue that up. Let's do a. Uh, let's do the advanced. Maybe this will pop real quick here, because, like, everybody's doing it right now. That's the thing to do this weekend. Yeah, that was easy. That was fast. That was fast. This will probably go pretty fast, actually. Hmm, I wonder what happens if I throw a bunch of science powers at the Crystalline Cataclysm. I'm going to throw all my, like, temporal powers at it. I haven't actually tried that yet. So this should be quite interesting. Look at all that crap I have going on right now. I didn't even take any damage. Hey, I got third place. I will take it. Third place.
Well, there we go. I took third place in that, so not too bad. That's an advanced run, of course. Um, yeah, that was pretty smooth. Um, it goes through a couple of those, you know, bursts where it can do a lot of damage to you. And I wasn't even taking hardly any damage from the stupid thing. <laughs> that just shows you how good I have on healing with all these abilities. Um, now, I fired off all of my science abilities, but with everybody else, you know, there's like 10 people in this queue doing that as well. It was hard to see what was actually happening. Um, you could see the long list of powers I had out there growing, you know, doing things. But it was difficult to see what was actually happening. Um, but the thing went down pretty fast, that's for sure. And I took third place uh, out of 10 people. So not, not bad there. And... Um, I probably could have done more damage. I forgot to buff my auxiliary before I fired off everything, which I normally do with the red matter, and I, I did it too late. I realized, whoops, I forgot to hit that. So many buttons to press. I also was able to use my molecular deconstruction beam. That helped a lot too, doing a lot of damage to the thing. I probably should have hit temporal threading before I started firing on it, though. Uh, whatever. Made a few mistakes, but overall... Um, crystalline entity advanced on this ship um, butter I mean it's pure butter it was just sliced through that thing like it was butter that's how awesome it is <laughs> um, okay let's do another thing let's do uh, something where I can get a lot of ships in a big group like I said and of course that's just going to be a general patrol um, let's go to like um, Karaya, which is going to be Romulans, and I'm, what I want to do is show you that ability I'm talking about. Well, not, it's not an ability, it's just a combination of powers. Uh, what happens when you fire off all the temporal powers and not actually fire on the enemy. I think one of them you might have to fire on him to get it activated, but after that I'll try to stop it. I really want to include the anti-time entanglement singularity with all that, so let me let that cool down. But yeah, man. I mean, I just really cannot say enough about this this ship it and and this build with the temporal uh, temporal defense initiative reputation. It's such a powerful combination. I mean, I thought the Delta Alliance set was good on this thing. I mean, I think the temporal set is even better, especially with all these temporal abilities. Um, you throw them all together, and I mean, just I mean, uh, just with gravity well and like the causal anchor alone from the ship itself is a powerful combination. But then you throw into that the temporal fracture and the anti-time entanglement and the temporal threading. Um, you add all of that together. And, I mean, just, you can take out anything. Nothing, nothing phases this ship. I do ISA runs. I, and I put all those effects on a gate or the end tactical cube at the end. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It just, uh, it drains it and kills it. And, and I'm also able to do Tycon's Rift, too. I can throw that in there sometimes, too. And, man, I haven't even used my photonic fleet in such a long time. I'm a science character. I've got photonic fleet. I barely use photonic fleet because I don't need it. The, I mean, there was a time, and I need to talk about this more, actually. There was a time when I really needed to use photonic fleet early on in this game, early on in the early years of this game. Photonic fleet was necessary to do some DPS. I don't need it anymore. That's how awesome that the power base has become. It really is something. It's evolved and changed quite a bit over time. Uh, hopefully this will load up quickly and we can get into this. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, well, I'm going to just kill everything with science here. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Come on. Uh, we start off in this patrol with a Dederit X and a Mogai. So that's what I'm going to do those powers on. I'm just going to like unleash all the science powers and like not even fire on the ships. Just unleash science on them.
Not gonna even pull out my fighters either. I will buff my science. Science fleet. Now here it goes. I am gonna do gravity well because that's part of my science base. Gravity well, causal anchor, temporal fracture. The other one you have to fire with, temporal threading. So there we go, look at that. I mean, look at him go, look at him go. I don't even have to fire on him, the Daredex gone. Mogai gone. I didn't even have to fire, folks. I didn't even have to fire. Now I'll hit temporal threading. A Tycan's Rift. They're gone. And they're gone. How awesome was that? I, I, I even forgot to do the um, anti-time entanglement. <laughs> You have to be close for this one. Ha ha ha. Man, it's awesome. Man, that is awesome. I mean, I mean, gosh, seriously, seriously, what more is there to say about that? What more can you say? I mean, that's just unbelievable, amazing. Um, I'm real, if you cannot tell, I'm highly impressed by this ship. Now that I have it combined with the temporal reputation, um, it's just incredible. What else can I do to, um, people aren't really running a lot of STFs right now because everybody's doing crystalline catastrophe. So really, uh, yeah, really not a lot of people are doing STFs. Well, there's an ISA. Let's see if we can get in on that. Maybe we can go ahead and get an ISA in there. It's common. A lot of people play that. So, maybe we can get in on that. I don't know how quickly it'll feel. Like I said, everybody's doing crystalline catastrophe. But let's see. Yeah, like I said, I don't even know. If, I don't know how long it's going to take to fill this. Um, what else can we do, though? Like, is there a mission we can do where there's like a lot of... There's, I, there are some missions where there are a lot of... I'll tell you, the Vodwar are pretty tough. They're pretty tough, actually. I could do a Delta Quadrant... But, not a patrol, not not like the uh, not like our gala. That's easy, but there's a, there's got to be something in out there that's pretty tough. I'm trying to think of what might be. What might be a good thing to do? And I don't know exactly what that would be.
Wow, yeah, that is not filling very fast, is it? Um... What could I do? What has a lot of enemies? The beginning of Midnight has a lot of enemies with the Iconians. That would actually not be too bad, guys. I do recall that Midnight has a lot, or Heralds, I should say, it has... There's, you have to, you know, go to Earth and defend the Anorax before it can travel in time, but that little beginning part of the, of the mission story there has quite a bit of Heralds you have to take out, um, and there's a lot of them. And of course, Heralds would be good ships to test this ship against. That may be a good idea right there. We have future missions, but... Oh, it failed. But I cannot think of... I guess Ragnarok, maybe? I know the Sphere Builder ships are pretty tough. Hum. Hum, hum, hum. Well, let's do this ISA since we're right here. We can see that run. Um, and see how good that goes. Probably gonna go very fast. This is, I think this is the 30k, 30k chat, so this one will probably go pretty fast. I don't even know what my DPS is on this ship. I haven't parsed it completely yet, but I'm pretty sure it's over 30k. <laughs> but, um, I don't know exactly what it is. It's hard to do a, a, a good actual run when I'm commentating because I can't concentrate as well. Okay, let's make sure nothing is selected. And let's pull my... Um, I like to back up just in case. Let's um, pull my fighters. dead soon. Like I said, this is going to go fast. <laughs>
Well, that was fast. Ah, uh, welcome back, everybody. So I've got an idea. This is uh, probably a good idea. I'm going to do something a little different instead of another patrol or something like that. Um, let's actually do the beginning of like a mission. One where there are a lot of enemies, tough enemies, heralds. Uh, I got to looking at the missions here and I remember that Midnight, under the Iconian missions, has a lot of ships during the first part of that mission. You have to protect the Anoraks before going back in time. And there's a whole lot of herald ships there. So this will be a really good test uh, for PvE content, you know, playing mission content against a whole lot of herald ships. Which um, obviously is very in-game content. So let's do One that. Way or another. And we'll just do that first part of the mission. We're not going to play the whole mission. We're just going to play that first part of the mission where there's a whole lot of ships. And that'll be a good test. I think. We'll find out anyway. Let's see. You are cleared for docking. I guess we have to go to that conference thing first. I'll try to make this as quick as possible here. Um, uh, you gotta go talk to like everybody. Uh, so I just F F F F F F her. I come up here, I F him, F F F F F him, F her, F F F F F F F. Okay, now F F F him, go to the briefing. Conference, let's Get this on, go in here, speak to Kagrin, we'll F him, F, 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 and there we go. Now maybe we can bypass this, yes we can, beam up, here we go. <laughs> that's, that's how you do it. You are cleared for departure. Good luck. Well, of course. So now we get to fight some heralds, lots of them. So this will be a good test. I will use my abilities well. If it will ever load. One. One percent. Ha ha ha. Oh, 30. 30 percent. Ha ha ha. 40 percent. 100. Yep, it's, it's a lot. Okay. This is the USS Hood. Our attack group is taking heavy losses. RRW of Eventrix responded to your call for assistance. Target shield. Target shield has failed. Target shield has failed. Ow, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. I survived that. We need immediate assistance. Enterprise can hold the line. Help get those ships back into the fight. I don't know what they hit me with, but they held me. They held me and killed my whole strength bad. I don't know what that was. Yeah, they held me in place and my knock my systems offline. You saw that. My systems were like all offline. I couldn't go anywhere. Couldn't do anything. Magnetic fields are failing! 
Luckily, I, I, I heal very fast, as you can see. I am healing very fast. Again, I was being held, holding me with something. Chimera, all non-essential personnel are away. Okay, got too close. Ooh, it's a lot of ships. The heralds are pretty tough. I want to take on the dreadnought. I told you I'd be back. And we brought together forces from every quadrant of the galaxy. The Iconians have done the impossible. I hope you the Herald out. I'm arriving with the time ship. We must protect it until the portal is stable. Where's the dreadnought? I want to take on the dreadnought. Or the battleship. Let's do it. And it's gone. Keep those Iconians off us. Temporal coordinates have been identified. I can't move. <laughs> I'm stuck. We're halfway there. Creating a bridge across space time. There's the dreadnought. I really cannot move. I'm totally stuck right now. Stabilizing the temporal portal so a ship can 
travel through it. Yes, awesome. There we go. All right, we we did kill every ship. <laughs> I blew up once or twice, once I guess, and came really close. The uh, they have some amazing abilities to hold you. There were some points in there where I could not move at all. I was completely stuck and just having to hope to stay alive. Um, and of course there are EMPs and stuff that kill your subsystems and then you have nothing left and you can't do anything. That's pretty rough. Um, that's a pretty rough go there. So only blowing up once I guess is not terrible. And uh, I did eventually get the Dreadnought. I wish I had had... I, I mistargeted. I thought the battleship was the Dreadnought at first. I guess it comes a little bit later. Because I wanted to target all of my science abilities on the Dreadnought and see how much damage it did. But I guess I uh, missed that chance. I didn't time it correctly there. I wasted all my abilities on the battleship and I should have waited for the Dreadnought. Oh well. Next time I'll know better. But hopefully you guys can at least, you know, get the point across here of how awesome the temporal initiative stuff is alongside a temporal science vessel um, you know if you use the powers in the right combination you use things the right way at the right time fire off things in the right order um, it's an incredible combination of powers just absolutely I cannot stress enough how incredible the, the powers are when combined in combination that's really the key. Gotta fire them off at the right time. But man, yeah, this temporal defense initiative stuff is really, really cool. There is one other thing I was gonna show you and that's just to do a little bit on the ground. We won't do a whole lot because I did do that in the other video, but Let's just quickly go to the Delta Quadrant and we'll go to Kobali and I will show you now with max level, you know, temporal, temporal ground set, how that looks. Yeah, I really cannot stress just how awesome this whole set is on this ship. I mean, this has almost been like a complete review in itself, again, of this ship. But I think this video was very worth it. And I hope somebody got something out of it. Because um, I just wanted to stress, you know, how good this, this reputation is on a science character, on a science ship, on these temporal ships. Uh, very powerful. I'm going to be using this set for... Oh, stop moving going to be using this set for my other science ship reviews that I'm going to be doing. And I'll go over that at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Um, let's quickly go down to Kobali. We won't take too long here. Um, bring my Jim Hadar, and let's just fire off some of these temporal things on ground as well. 
I'll switch up to my dual pistols here, my temporal pistols. Uh, one thing I forgot when I recorded the last video was that um, this downgrades you to level 51 when you are on Kobali Prime. So that's why the DPS is lower on this world when you look at weapon powers and stuff is because you are actually level 51, not 60 when you're on this planet. So your DPS levels, if I look at my DPS on these weapons, that's not the correct DPS because that's not level 60, that's level 51. But there's the pistols. I see they work pretty good. They work pretty good. Flanking damage detected. And then here is the anti-time entanglement field. Remember, it's Mark 14 Epic. Here's the fracture. So you can see I don't even have to fire on him. And it does a lot of damage. Um, the other powers are, of course, not based on the temporal set. But those two powers there. And I like how quick the cooldown time is on the entanglement field. It's a very quick cooldown time. However, the temporal stasis has a like one and a half minute cooldown or more. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this one has a very long cooldown time, but I like how quickly the cooldown time is on the anti-time entanglement field. That one is very quick uh, to cool down, and that allows you to use it a lot. I end up using this one just all the time on ground, anti-time anti -time entanglement. I can use it all the time. I love this new module I got. Check out this module. I like that one. Isn't that cool? I like that one. Temporal Fracture. So yeah, on the ground, it's a pretty cool set as well. I'm actually liking it a lot on ground. Like I said, we won't spend too much time there because pretty much already showed that the last time. But it's a good ground set too. I really do like the Temporal Defense Initiative for ground and space. And like I said, I'm going to be doing more space, uh, more space, more starship reviews, uh, more science starship reviews. 
Uh, two of the science ships to look forward to that I will be reviewing are, I'm going to do the, oh, wrong thing, I'm going to go to here, and ships, and tier six, and I'm going to review the 26th century science ship. It looks like Daedalus, right here, Nautilus, it's called Nautilus, looks like the Daedalus. Um, but this is going to be the 26th century science ship I do for the review. Uh, and on this one, I'm also going to use the Temporal Defense Initiative gear set. Same one I have on this ship, I'm just going to port it over to that ship. So that should make that ship quite interesting as well. And then the next science ship after that is... Um, I thought I had another one. Was I wrong? I don't know what the next science ship after that one will be, actually, then. I have that one, I have that one, and of course I've already done the 23rd century stuff, so yeah, I guess that's that's the next one, and then after that I don't know what will be next. But that's definitely going to be the next one for right now, is I'm going to get into the Nautilus class. But I have, I have really, really enjoyed the multi-mission science vessel, 31st century. So, I mean, if you're looking for a good science starship, I just highly recommend this temporal multi-mission science vessel. And I recommend combining it with the temporal defense reputation. Uh, when you do that, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, there's a, an incredible amount of power there. And if you can upgrade everything, even better. Um, makes it a very tough ship. How about we end uh, end everything with an ISA? How about that? We'll end this video with an ISA. Just a nice, quick, common run. Everybody does them. Borg, simple. Everybody knows this one. And uh, that'll be like our, our end here for this video. Take that back. I'm on cooldown. We won't do that. So yeah, this is a very powerful setup. Um, just amazing abilities. Um, a good build, a good solid build. Um, I, I haven't parsed this thing in a while, but uh, I'm I'm do I'm probably doing over 30k. So you know you can you can take on anything in this game. Any PVE content you will not have any problem with. Any new missions they throw at us, not a problem. Um, yeah, really, really, really good. I like this ship. I like the Temporal Defense Initiative stuff. They've done a good job on that, so. Um, this video went on a lot longer than I anticipated, but I hope there's some good information in there somewhere. I don't know. It's just me rambling. Actually, it's just me having a good time is what this is. Honestly, that's all this is. I'm just, I'm playing a game. This is entertainment. Um, I like this ship. I like the temporal stuff. I put it all together. I made a video about it. It's really that simple, so try not to think too hard about it. Hopefully this has been entertaining for you as well. Well, any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.